billion, their people would not be taken. Now, this would be taken. The enemies of the Zulus. You understand? Since the Zulus had a, had a treaty with Britain, the Zulus would round up their enemies and sell them to the white man. And take a guess who their enemies were. Us. We was the enemies to all the African people. You can find these in books. Uh, right there, Babylon from Babylon 10, book 2. I'm fine, brother. I'll tell you how we were enemies with all the African tribes. Tell you a book right there, brother. Let me get to real fast. Okay. All right, the yellow one. Up right there, that's a little, little bit, no, no, other side. Right there. The, the, the Moorish Americans are us. No, oh, excuse me. The actual, the Moorish American religion, the Moorish American religion are black people. Black people. But, but the, this religion is based on a treaty that this cat named Timothy Drew found. He found this treaty. Stating that the Moroccans had a treaty with America, that they would never be taken into the slave trade. So then he said, Moroccan, I'm Moroccan. I was never a slave. My people ain't never been slaves. We are the Moors who are not slaves. It was his way of trying to make black people not be slaves. You know, say trying to raise them up out the dust a little bit. But black people were slaves, but the Moroccans were not. We are not Moroccans. You understand? The Moroccans were not taken into captivity. The Zulus, the Ethiopians, all these people had treaties with Britain, treaties with America. But their enemies, they went to war with us, shackled us up, and then to get us out of their land, sold us to the white man. Sorry, I'm going to a little bit play this book while I ask you a question. Go ahead. Uh, get frustrated. Go ahead, brother. The more Americans are us, they're just <coughs> black people in general. Okay, let me give you to you a little bit try to do simple. Wu Tang Clan. They black or white? Are they black or Chinese? Wu Tang Clan is Chinese. Is black? I mean, that'd be. They name is black, but they name Chinese. Right. Why? Well, so, is there? You know, is is Wu Tang an actual place? An actual clan? I think it is. It is. Huh. Wu Tang Clan is the actual clan in China. Huh. So why do? Who's uh? Who's the reason? Who's he? He ain't Chinese. So how's he a Wu Tang Clan? Say it again. The Moorish Americans are black, black, but they took the name of the Moorish Americans who are Moroccan. Oh, okay. They took the name of. But well, what I'm asking are you, okay, do the Israelites want to be Moroccan? Yes. Just like, just like, okay, they want to be Chinese. <laughs> it's the same old story. Y'all been to class, it's the same old story. Niggas trying to be something they ain't. Every day, all day, any day. And that's it. One more question. Okay. okay. Uh, and in order for them to do that, so they would not be taken care of. No, no. It was already, it was already, this, this happened like in the 20s, 30s. Slavery was over. But they was trying to claim a history that was not a slave history, okay. trying to make themselves better. Okay. Just like the Wu Tang Clan. The Wu Tang Clan don't want to just be niggas from the projects. They want to be the Wu Tang Clan, who ain't never been in captivity, never been slaves, right. who are clean, which is also who's the first man to do that? You all to so try to clean himself in another people's culture. We talk about Adam. Adam, the first one that did. That's the fig leaf he did to hide from shame. The trees of Lebanon, whose leaves were great, their culture. He hide himself. The more the, the, this cat Timothy Drew did, it, which is where the, the Moorish American religion comes. Islam ain't no fucking different. Uh, uh, is the nation of Islam black or Arab? Arab. The nation of Islam is Arab? Uh, no, they niggas. Yeah, they niggas. But how could the nation of Islam be niggas? So how could they be niggas? Go ahead. I forgot we had the treaty and uh, um, the Moroccans are like, but I still think our opinion that they were still black and the white man was still black against white people coming in there. Okay, you know, because I'll explain. Black against white is something that's in our mind. Black against white ain't what's in the white man's mind. And it got nothing to do with black against white. It's just how we conceptualize things today. It's really Edomite against Israelites. You say that's really the deal. But we think black against white, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. Black against white. Uh, um, the Arabs. What color are the Arabs? 
Then you look like me, you've been white. Right? Just look just like us. So why did the white man enslave them? Were they slaves? No. But you see the pictures up there, they, was, they ran the slave boat. We had a picture in the back? I'm fine, though. This is an Arab picture that I can't. That was right there. This is right there. It's right over there. So they enslaved no Arabs. Instead, they ain't got nothing to do with black. It was nations that they were at war with. Think like that. They was at war with our nation, but not at war with the Zulus. Not at war with the Ethiopians. And you know not at war with the Arabs. To this day, they they, they allies with Saudi Arabia. So right now. And always have been since the Sinbad in the Seven Seas. Been allies with the white man. In trade, they got goods. They work together. I mean, they got, they got oil. They got goods. They got... Yeah, Zulus got ivory, uh, um, zebra skins and shit, and, and, and they work together. But us, nobody works with us. Because we hate it of all nations, like the scriptures say. Let me show it to you in this book right here. Not a Jew type thing. This, this is page 90, all right? Take this book. Go to page 90 quickly, all right? Um, back to this way. Page 90. Yeah, they got nothing to do with black against white. It's got nothing to do with color. Huh. It's not about color. Color is just some shit that came from the 60s. Or color, color, color. Color is irrelevant. Color got nothing to do with this. You got to do with nations, races, families, bloodlines. And there's African tribes that have always been the ally. Man, how so? How long ago was it that? Like, white man allies in Africa. Listen, you watch the movie Saka Zulu, they have a documentary. It's pretty factual. But they sit. British soldiers over there, they treaties, work with them. Now, now Shaka Zulu began to rebel against them, and they killed him. And the next king that got on the throne, they worked with him. They worked with him. They always, they've been having treaties with Ethiopia. Get them. Get them. They're doing good um, trade. Like today, why do you think all the, all, all the cab drivers is um, African? All the valets. Exactly. All the East Indians are the 7 Do you know how they got that? Working with the white man, being his ally. In a good trade with him, in good standing with him. Us, not so good. Page 9. Page 90. Uh, black Jews and, and blacks over the African tribes. You understand? So we were black Jews, they were African tribes. Same complexion. Just like the Arabs got the same complexion. Who else got the same complexion as us? All the Africans, the Arabs, the Hawaiians. Same complexion as you and I. Okay. So my answer is that we have an advantage over them. Okay, no, this this is a little different. He's going to explain it further. Keep reading. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, what, what, say, what, say what you're trying to say again. I said black Jews have an advantage over the African tribes. So what were you trying to say? So my answer is we have an advantage over the Africans. That's why. That's why what? We're the same. Yes. African. Yes, you're right. That's correct. That's, that's correct. We, we was not getting along, and we was chumping them in Africa. He was getting over on yeah, but we was doing better than them. And because of it, they started to hate us. Like, well, how, we, how these cats going to come to our land and be taking more property than us and building more crops? Remember, why do you think they went and got us? They don't tell you this in history. Either. They always tell you the black people was picking cotton. What they don't tell you is that we grew it. You understand? We grew the cotton. What's that cat name with the peanut? Well, I can't never remember. I'll call him a credit card. What's his name again? What's his first name? James Carter? George Washington. George Washington, they all mixed together. Him, Frank Douglas, <laughs> Jack Carver, this cat here, was, a, was raised up during the time of slavery and grew them peanuts, cultivated them peanuts, and slaves grew the cotton. Slaves grew the sugar cane, knew where it should grow, knew how the soil was supposed to be. They did the whole thing, just like in Washington, D.C. Slaves built the city, designed the city. Y'all know about that? Mm -hmm. Check that out, man. That, Washington, D.C. was a slave city. It was a plantation. That's why the White House is a plantation house. Have you ever noticed? If you check out history a little bit. You ever seen them plantation houses? Gone with the wind. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Those, that's a plantation house, and that whole city was built by slaves. Because before they put the capital there, it was full of crops. And then they had, who was the cat that had designed it? The Jake. One of the three. Not, not Frederick Douglass, not Carver, but the other one. He put one up. Benjamin Bank. Benjamin Bank. Designed the whole goddamn city. So, when they went to Africa, we was doing that in Africa. Growing cotton, growing sugar cane, growing rice. Check this history out if you can. 
Slavery started with rice. That's how it started. In South Carolina. Why? Because the white man conquered this land, got to Carolina, and saw that the soil was good for rice. Guess what? The white man had no idea how to grow rice. He went down and got some people in Africa who he knew could grow rice good. How did he know? If I know, take a guess. I know you didn't do history yet, but take a guess. How did he know? Say again? No, this is before he enslaved. He knew it was people in Africa that could grow and cultivate rice good. The Africans knew these people out here selling rice like you don't know what. Conquering us in the rice game. And they went, Africans killed them people, put them in chains, gave them to the Arabs, the Arabs gave them to the white man, and the white man put them in South Carolina and said, grow rice here. Grow it. Grow it here. Check it out for yourself. Go into the library. That's where the Carolina rice come from. You see that brand of rice? That's where it started at in South Carolina. And it started with rice, not because he needed laborers, but because we knew how to grow rice. And he came and got, and Esau, I'll tell you this in his history class, he went and got specific tribes that knew how to cultivate rice. So the whole myth of he just went to Africa and just snapped up everybody he saw is not the case. He went and got people who already were ashamed by the Africans, who were already African prisoners, like opening up your jails and taking everybody who was in jail. We was already in jail from losing wars against these Africans who went to war with us over jealousy, over our rice, our cotton, our sugar cane that we was growing in Africa. Keep reading. And carried the culture, history laws, and new records. See that? We went to Africa. We fled out of Rome, to me, out of Jerusalem, because the Romans was killing us. And we went in, in Africa, right? But when we went to Africa, we kept our culture while we were kept our laws, our culture. And our culture does what it's supposed to do when we're around other people. What is that? Keeping your culture does one thing when you're around other people. What will it do? That's true, but it's something else I was talking about. You're right. I'm not about it. You on it. I was looking, looking for one specific thing, though. Anybody else? Taiwan? I keep my culture. I go around other people. Guess what? We ain't going to be able to play they eating pork and we don't. Uh, we wear fringes and they don't. They eating the shrimp, we don't. So our culture divided us from the Africans, kept us at enemies, and it prospered us. And we was in Africa growing sugar cane, growing corn, but it's like, not corn, growing um, rice. It's like in the book of Exodus, that's why I see it. How can we do it between? Most definitely. Uh, that's exactly. Yes, that's right. So we kept our culture, kept our written records, kept everything. Go ahead. This is short them a, a constant procedure for the development of higher social organization. That's what you said, prosperous. Like this culture allowed us to always be able to develop an organization over there, to develop structure, which is why in Israel School of UPK we press the culture because it gives you a structure. And that's what black people and Spanish people need structure in that life. We live a life that's lawless, that's free, so called. Right. And because of it, we are run a fucking muck and pray to everybody else. You come into school, it push you into a spot, push you into a zone, push you into your place. Which when you do that, brother, you get a culture, you get a machine that can run. It's like having a body where the feet and the arms and the head all fall apart. And then having a body where the feet start doing what they do, the hands do what they do, the head do what it do. Then that body can move. We was in Africa and we had a structure because of our culture which the Africans didn't have, but they didn't have it. Sucking on the damn the, the cow vagina. Y'all didn't see them take shit. Where them take shit, man? Pull that tape out. We're going to do VCR. You're going to see African. You want to be African? I'll play. I'm going to let you be African. This time you're going to see the cat put his head in the cow vagina and go, oh, 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 Keeping our culture, right? Our laws. Yeah, we weren't keeping, we keeping our culture. We weren't keeping our culture like <coughs> Israelites supposed to. But keeping our culture means staying together and keeping a structure, meaning we don't mix with you Africans. We do this, we grow rice, we prosper. But not like we're supposed to. And too late for that. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me give it to you a little clip. Let's say we're in America, right? And black people started saying, perfect example, before, before uh, integration, 
Have you had their own stores? Their own laundromats? Had their own numbers? Had their own numbers business? Had their own bars? Had their own place? Right? It was away from white people. Or were they righteous? No. But we had enough culture to stick to our own, have our own businesses, raise up our own community, which made us do good, like Black Wall Street down in Oklahoma. You already that? I got checking into that. But it's also Oklahoma, that's correct. But those brothers kept to themselves at airports, rich. The first woman millionaire was CJ Walker, who invented all that shit to make a black woman's hair look like a white woman's hair. She did she got, but she was a millionaire in the 20s. They were for the 20s, I think. Not no later than twenties. So we had enough to stay together, but not righteous. But had enough culture to become structured, keep to ourselves, keep our money circulating in our community, and we did the same thing in Africa. You know, kept all our goods in our community, kept ourselves together, but not righteous. And too late, we had already sinned back in Jerusalem. Already sinned with Moses. The ship was coming down. I don't care how much rice we were selling. It was curses. Was coming down. Just like over here in America. They had their own businesses, but too late for that. It was coming down. It's that keep on going, brother. Would you want to say something? So you said when we prospered then, but we still prosper after we still was under the curse after you say one more time. After we I mean after we prosper in Africa? No, after we prosper, we prosper like in Tulsa when we still prosper, but we still was under the curse. Most definitely still under the curse. Because not not the prosperity of the Lord one for us. Not Ruling the evils, but just surviving and knowing how to exist with them, which is not what the Lord wants. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's, it falls anyway. Like whatever you build up in America is going to fall. You know what I mean? Like Motown Records or Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Now you might find a way to build up and get prosperous in, but it's still cursed, and the Lord going to still wipe you out. So it don't change anything. The Lord wants one thing from us, brother, and that's holiness, righteousness. And without that, everything else is temporary. Everything else, you know, just looks like it's going to last, but it really is not. And that's how I was in Africa. That's how I was in Africa. So if I was to uh, uh, build a company or something, and I'm not going to get the laws, and this will uh, prosper? Okay. No, it ain't no guarantee you would prosper even in Israel, because the Lord might not want you to set no business. I mean, the Lord might want you to do the work of the Lord. The thing is, with any prosperity, is to want his prosperity. And most men miss that. Let me give you an example. The scriptures say this. Tell me if you're not familiar with this. Whatsoever thou ask for the Father in my name, he shall give it thee. Who is not familiar with that? Let's just say. Everybody know, right? That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Show me how we shot. What does that mean? Whatsoever thou ask for the Ask the Father in my name, he shall give it thee. What does it mean? Now, this, this is very basic. Now. It's very basic. Everybody do it with fun earth. Every Christian say the name of Jesus. Every Israelite say, Basham Yahweh Shah. Right? Everybody who serve, who they, who they think Christ is, say it in the name of Jesus. What does it mean? My God. Talk about the will of the Father in Christ's name. What do you mean? Okay, what is it? Okay, give me this. What does it mean in the name of Christ? That's the part of it. What does that mean? Go ahead. Meaning that all things go through Christ. What do you mean? That sounds good. Meaning that he died for the sins of Israel. Oh my God. Going on. Come on. What is it? Say it. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So what does that statement mean? It's on in the word. Just that. Just that. Mean it. Just say the words it means. Say it in today's English. Whatsoever thou ask the Father in my name, he will give it thee. What does that mean? Say that. Translate that in today's English. If you ask me for something, if you ask me for something, if you ask, if you ask, well, I mean, now I'm saying like, um, I'll decide what. Okay, no. Say it like you, the brother, he's talking to. Whatsoever thou ask the Father in my name, he will give it thee. Just translate it in today's image. Now, I need, I need some money. But you you ask him the Father in his name. Okay, Lord. Well, like, 
God was shocked because you asked God to see, see if you give me some money. So you said, so meaning, <laughs> if I ask the Lord, I, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm like, give me a shot. I, well, give me a shot. Like, I gotta, do I have to see how, I gotta see how it's out. Say, you know? Say, do I, I mean, like, he don't come from the most high. No. So, I get to see So, what does that mean? Whatsoever you ask, follow my name, he will give it to you. The same, he ain't saying in today's English. Get a brother shot. Um, in the Bible, we have, uh, uh, I go to Yahweh Shamash, and this day, the after the most high. If I ask the most high something, I ask Yahweh Shamash. How are you? How are you? And Yahweh Shamash, you have Mm-hmm. Now, what does it mean to ask in the Awashai Mashiach's name? That part, step part. Does it mean that he's above everything? He's king of everything. Okay, that's true, but what does that mean? Meaning, it's something I gotta do, right? It's saying I gotta ask the Father in his name. So, what is that thing that I have to do to get it? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Yes. Okay, yes, yes, it does. Take it. True. Let me get that one. Go ahead. True, but not with that ain't with that statement me. Let me give you a misconception. Alright? Here's the misconception. Which seemed very right. That if I want to get something, I gotta make sure that when I ask the Father, I say in the name of Jesus. In the prayer. All right? So if I say I want a car, I gotta say, Lord, please give me a car in the name of Jesus. I pray. Thank you. That's what everybody on earth think it means. That ain't what it means. It's not what it means. Because once again, here's the problem that you want to encounter. You ain't gonna get the car. And then you gonna thank you. It's the point of being true. I asked in the name of Jesus and didn't get the car. I asked for the Lord to give me, give me my child. I prayed the name of Jesus. I asked for the Lord to heal my mom. In the name of Jesus, my mom didn't get healed. It'll break your faith. I can break everybody else's. In the church. The church finally just say, Father, you know, we got to. But that's, what, that's what the church say. You got to claim this in the name of Jesus. Meaning, you want a car, you touch the car, you claim it. Meaning, if I say in the name of Jesus, I'm going to get this car. And then guess what happened? They don't get the car. Then they go, shit, I can try and get this shit. I got to get it on my own. It breaks your faith, not because the Lord ain't working, but because you just don't understand the Bible. It ain't that simple, eh? <laughs> Name of Jesus, give me this cup. Name of Jesus, give me this book. That ain't that. What does it mean? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <man. laughs> so it had to have something to do with the will of the most high. Okay, all, once again, all y'all right, but you ain't laser. You ain't laser in on it. Now, once again, this is where you're missing it. It's old English. I'm going to start reading some Shakespeare. Go read The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. <laughs> read is a good, good book. It's old English talk. Well, he ain't hit, but once I get a hit, you're going to know. I'm going to try one more time. Who else? You got it? I pray. Say again? I pray. I pray. I pray. Okay, you got to pray. You know it's prayer because you're asking the Lord. And asking the Lord is a prayer. Talking to the Lord is a prayer. Right? So when you pray, you have to ask for whatever you're asking for in the name of Yahweh What does it mean? Like in the spirit of Yahweh like the way he would do it. The way, the way he would do what? The way he would, whatever you're asking for, the way he would build it. Or the way he would. Okay, um, I want to I want to set up this okay, I want these brothers to come Lord, I pray in the name of Yahweh Shah that these brothers get it and understand the scriptures okay well, well let me say something the answer is what you all already do but you just don't know you're doing it you just don't realize it but it's how you do things right now but it just ain't never, you ain't ever verbalize it in your brain but I'm saying, but what I need to answer it's going to be already what you do already. <laughs> you understand? But now, it might help you with certain things in your personal life. You know what I mean? It might help you to understand something in your personal life, but it's already what we do in the school, already how y'all brought up, already what you do. That's why you and the you and Mark about examples with the examples y'all gave. And I'll explain later, because it's already what you're doing, but you just ain't never verbalized why you do it. 
Ain't no. Oh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's only right in the statement. Right. It's right there in the statement. Whatsoever thou ask the Father in my name, he shall give it thee. Meaning, whenever you ask the Father something in my name, he's going to give it to you. Now, if you don't understand that, that could seem like, I need this job, Lord. I want, I want to have a hot dog stand, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give me a hot dog stand. You won't get the loan? You're like, Dad, now what? I pray in the name of Jesus. This shit don't work. This Bible don't work. Nah, this shit don't work. The Lord is not a rabbit's foot. Understand? He ain't a rabbit's foot. He ain't a good luck shot. He ain't just there to give you all the shit you want. That ain't his point. Which is what we learn in the world. Like the Lord is just somebody just sitting up there waiting to give you all your fucking candy. That ain't him. He ain't. He, listen, nine times out of ten, he don't want you to be successful in this world. Nine times out of fucking ten, he do not want you to get no record contract. You understand that? That ain't what he want. He don't want you to get back with your woman. I know that's a shocker, ain't it? He want you not with her. He wants you, he do not want you to see your children. That's him. He don't want you to get no restaurant. He don't want you to get that new job. He don't want you to get that promotion. He damn sure don't want you to get that, get that car he wants so fucking bad. He don't want you that shit. And that goes against what we think. We think that he wants us to have all that shit when he don't. He don't nine times out of ten. But whatsoever thou ask the Father in the name of Christ, he shall be. What does it mean? I'm getting it. Stop. In the name of the law. Stop. In the name of the law. That's old English. Stop. In the name of the law. Y'all heard that statement before? Old movie? Stop. In the name of the law. What does that mean? You know, my God. I mean, this is the law. I'm telling you to stop. Hold up. of the law. Order of the law. The command of the law. But this is a man saying stop in the name of the law, ain't it? Right. So. This man has to be the law. So what does that mean? What is what? This man has to be the law. He, he's the law. What does that mean? He's the police the authority. Okay, even though he's... So, but who's telling you to stop? The uh, police. Hey, uh, Joe, Officer Joe Smith? Right. He's telling you to stop. Yeah. So why is he saying stop in the name of the law? Why is he saying stop in the name of Officer Joe Smith? I'm Officer Joe Smith, yeah. stop. Why is he saying stop in the name of the law? Because, okay. because, because, okay, he's not telling you to stop because he wants you to stop, but the law. The law wants you to stop. Yeah. What does that mean? The law wants you to stop. Yeah. It's, it's written, whatever you're doing, you got to stop. Who is the law? When Officer Joseph is saying, stop in the name of the law, what is the law in that state? Give me a shot. America. America, the governor, the mayor, the city, right? So even though Officer Joe Smith is telling me to stop, who is actually telling me to stop? America. America. So, can Officer Joe Smith say, woman, give me some pussy in the name of the law. Can Officer Joe Smith say that? Why? Because that ain't the law asking. Can he say, drop me draws in the name of the law and have sex with me? So, so woman, can why can't because that's not the law asking. But if he says, stop robbing that bank in the name of the law, you have to stop. But what if he says, stop, pull out your rod and slam it up inside the door? You got to do that? Why not? So, but if he asks in the name of the law, you got to do it. But if he asks for itself, you don't have to do it. Stop in the name of the law means the law is asking you to stop, not me. The law is telling you to do this. Now everybody got it now? Who think they got it? I'm not going to He's a representative. He's a representative of? The of the Most High. No, the Joe Smith. Joe Smith representative of the law. Whatsoever thou ask the Father in my name, he shall give it thee. What does that mean? In my name, meaning in the name of Christ. If you ask for something in the name of Christ, you are going to get it. What does that mean? I'm not about can't approach the Most High without His authority. Right. He ain't quite on it, brother. Right. He ain't on it. You gotta ask the things that Christ got. Give me more. You gotta ask the things that what? The, the things that Christ had. The things that He had. I mean, you gotta ask whatever He's His whatever He's His, his authority. Anything under His authority, you gotta ask the things that He's. That He what? I gotta 
ask for the things that he owns. I got to ask right. for the things that he, that he, I'm asking for it, so don't, I can't say I got it. Right. I'm asking for it. So I got to ask for the things that he, did you give me? I got, I'm asking, right. so I got to ask for the things that he, well, you ain't quite there, Tom Lord. 